Welcome, I'm Peggy Oliveira. Today I wanted to share something with you a little bit different, um, a little bit more personal. So I've shared a lot of personal stuff on my YouTube channel and social media. Um, and so it's always a little surprising to me when somebody says that I'm a little hard to get to know or um, that they don't know that much about me. And this is from people that I have in my personal life, um, even more so probably than people that find me on YouTube. But I'm always a little shocked by that because I feel like I share so much. And something um, that comes up sometimes in my work with clients is they will sometimes ask questions around my process because it can be hard for them to believe that I was once where they are. And that's always a little surprising to me too, but I get it um, because if I had seen if I had been able to project into the future and seen myself now, I wouldn't have been able to believe that it could be the same person. But um, something like that recently came up and I thought about that and I thought, okay, maybe I should do a video talking a little bit more about that and I just haven't done it. And I was talking with a friend the other day and recognizing that these last few weeks, actually probably a month and a half or so, um, has brought up stuff for me that I haven't had to really deal with in quite a long time. So I wanted to share it with you in part to help you know that I am human and that healing is an ongoing process. We get to a place where we reach that summit and I, I believe that. And once we've reached that summit, everything really has shifted. It's not that everything shifts when we get to the summit. It's that as we're on our way to the summit, everything shifts over time. And the difference in being kind of at the base of the mountain or partway up the mountain and being at the summit is that when things come up for you, because they will, they do, um, how you navigate through it, the impact that it has on you is a little bit different. So I was somebody who I was so shy because I was so insecure and I had so much shame. I had a hard time literally using my voice. I was very quiet. People had to ask me what many times. I wouldn't look at people. And I didn't know it at the time, of course, but that's because of the shame that I carried because I didn't feel worthy. And I believed that people would have a judgment about anything that I had to say because I judged everything that I had to say. <laughs> and it's a terrible place to be, to struggle with that, especially when you don't even really recognize that you're struggling with it. Um, but I was like that. And it's not that I have changed who I am. This person right here today is the same person I was then. What is different is that I am more connected with and to that person. I am connected to the truth of the strength and possibility. And then I didn't know that that strength and possibility even existed. In fact, I was absolutely positive that it did not exist within me. And it has been all of the healing practices and the experiences that have led me to this point. And what is this point? <laughs> well, most days are pretty good. 
Um, I'm not even having to be consciously aware of what I think about myself or what I believe about my possibilities. It's just how I live my life. On social media, once I talked about self-compassion becoming a natural state, most of the time, I naturally practice self-compassion. I don't have to be intentional about it all the time. It happens pretty naturally. And that is ultimately what healing is. But life is challenging at times and vulnerability happens for everybody. And in those places of vulnerability, some of those old doubts, maybe even some of those old behaviors, ways of coping, are more likely to creep back in. And over the last couple of months, <laughs> I've had to be really mindful of that because I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but um, I've had my own business for about 14 years. I've been a therapist for over 20 um, and I've had my online business for about seven years. And there have been parts of that that have been vulnerable for sure, especially when I was just starting out in private practice. Um, but for the most part, I feel like I've been very fortunate um, in, in how I've put myself out there and how it's been received and, and all of that for whatever reason. And, and I think I know what some of those reasons are. are. One, it's just very vulnerable. It's something really new and out of my comfort zone. Um, and I think honestly, just with COVID and not being able to live our lives fully, so not having as much access to the things that tend to fill me up, um, nothing big, just a lot of little things. And that's important to recognize too, that often it's not something really traumatic or catastrophic or life-changing. It's just a buildup of little things sometimes. But with all of that, those little different pieces of vulnerability, putting this new thing out into the world felt even more vulnerable than it might have otherwise. And I'm referring to returning to wholeness because it's such a different thing than I'm used to doing. And while it's the same work, basically, which is kind of interesting, right? It's not like I'm jumping into a whole new career or anything, but it is very different. The way of connecting with people is a little bit different. Um, inviting a much larger group of people is quite different because I tend to work individually or in very small groups. Um, so some differences there. And all of those differences create uncertainty, right? And part of that uncertainty is not having experience with it, not being sure whether or how it would be received, how I would feel about it. And so uncertainty always creates vulnerability. There was a lot of stress in getting it out into the world and stress creates vulnerability. There are a lot of tech issues, which creates lots of stress and stress creates vulnerability. So all these layers of vulnerability have been present. And for me, what happens when I am feeling vulnerable, and this is really true for most people, when we are feeling vulnerable, particularly those layers of vulnerability. We tend to go back to some of those old ways of thinking and our core beliefs can be more easily triggered. And for me, a big part of my core belief has been that basically that I'm not worthy. Now, I've done a whole lot of healing on that and not only consciously, but even subconsciously, I believe generally that I am worthy. But when that vulnerability kicks in, especially around something kind of new that I'm kind of just in a sense, almost like exposing yourself, then that is a little bit more likely to show up. And for me, when that doubt creeps in, it connects to shame. Now I've done a lot of healing around my shame. And when I consciously think about it, I don't feel ashamed of anything any longer. There are things that I wish I hadn't done, things I wish I could do over, 
things I even feel bad about and remorse about, but I don't feel shame about them anymore. But in that place of vulnerability, in that place of doubt, it easily connects to shame. And I was actually just sharing with my husband the other day that um, I had one of those moments where I was thinking, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, and not just about the membership, but um, like, what have I done? Do I need to do something different? Like just questioning lots of things because that's what that doubt creates, right? Um, and I shared with him that this feeling was like really intense and I had the desire, like this, this need almost in that moment, it wasn't lasting, but I had this felt like a need to just run away from it all. And as soon as I said that, as soon as I was able to articulate that, I also was then able to recognize, okay, that means shame has been triggered because that desire to run and hot, not necessarily hide from me in that moment, but I wanted to run. That for me is always an indicator, was, was always an indicator that shame was there. And at the time I wasn't aware that that's what was happening, but that's really what was happening. And so I thought, okay, wait a minute, I don't feel ashamed of anything, so what is this really about? And what it was about is that I doubted whether I could do it because of the uncertainty. And that doubt, not being able to do it, connects with not being deserving of doing it, connects with who am I to do it? Like all those little pieces. And this is why it's so complex and multi-layered because all of that, without me even being aware of it in the moment, was present and that's what was driving that desire to run. And I said, I just want to give it all up. <laughs> He's like, give what up? <laughs> um, and of course, I don't want to do that. But in that moment, that's what I was feeling. And <clears throat> because I was able to recognize it, I was able to verbalize it, I was able to feel safe enough to share that that's what I was feeling. Just by saying it out loud, because of the healing I've been able to do, I was able to immediately recognize what was going on. Now, when we haven't had a lot of experience in doing that, that doesn't really happen that way. And so when, or if you're comparing yourself to me or to somebody else, it's important to recognize that. To recognize that me being able to do that the other day wasn't because somehow I'm stronger or better or more deserving. It was because I've had a lot of years, a lot of years of practice with it. Of even practicing in moments like that, that suddenly make me feel something that I felt a long time ago. And honestly, I haven't felt that in like a really long time. But I'm sharing this with you because even when we have done a lot of healing, and so even that idea of setbacks, right? Even when we've done a lot of healing, there are going to be things that happen, particularly if we're already feeling vulnerable about anything, and pretty much anything can make us feel vulnerable. There are going to be times that we find that we're struggling a little bit again, or maybe a lot. And what is most important isn't that you're struggling because you're going to struggle at times. What's most important is that you're able to bring awareness to it, and then you're able to do something consciously to help you move through that. And much of the time, it is about being able to share that with somebody because often, and maybe you've experienced this, 
sometimes just talking through something with somebody helps you connect with what's really going on, helps you connect to what it is that you actually need or want. How often have you done that? You've been talking about something that's going on and you come to your own conclusion. That's you working it out because there's a part of you that knows it, but there's so much going on in your head that you're not able to see it clearly. And as you're talking about it, you're processing it. And processing it helps you reconnect to what is true. So I am that same person who used to struggle with shame every day, every moment of my life, who believed with every ounce of my being that I was not worthy of happiness or love or connection. I am that same person. The only difference is that uh, now I am able to see the truth of who that person actually was. I couldn't, she couldn't see it at the time, but this person was always inside of that other person, <laughs> inside of me when I was scared and filled with shame, when I made really bad choices about coping and taking care of myself. And that is what healing is. Again, it's not about everything being perfect. It's not about never doubting yourself again. It's just about how we experience it, our awareness of it, and how we take care of ourselves as we move through it. This weekend, I didn't do much work at all this past weekend. I took it easy. I had work that I could have been doing, but things were caught up and I was able to say, okay, I'm just gonna take a break. I'm just gonna do some mindless things that don't take a lot of energy. Because that's what it means. If you have ever compared yourself to me or somebody else who you look at and think, I could never be like that. I could never feel confident. I could never talk openly about these things. I could never, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. You can. You have that possibility within you. You don't have to change who you are for that to be true. You just have to do enough healing to be able to see that it already exists within you. So thanks for watching. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Can you relate to anything that I shared? Um, I would really like to hear from you. I know it's been a while since I've talked much about kind of my own personal struggle and certainly not anything really recent. Um, and just for the record, I'm not giving anything up. <laughs> um, but isn't it interesting that in those moments, particularly when we're not really aware of what's going on, where it can lead us? So I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> um, and I am so grateful to be able to share this space with you and get to know you. So if you haven't introduced yourself, I'd love for you to do so in the comments. I'd love to know who is watching and who, if you benefit from this, letting me know that. Because it's you watching and commenting and reaching out to me 
that inspires me to show up here to share with you. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.